Option trading has so many confusing graphs and numbers, isn't it? Yeah. Well, since I'm a designer, I really want to use my design skills to help solve this very, very interesting problem to explain option trading in the simplest, humanly understandable way possible. And in today's video, I'm going to go over core credit spread. A more advanced play in option trading, I will have three versions for you. Core credit spread in one minute, three minutes, and five minutes, all with real Robinhood demos, easing you in from the high-level principles to the nitty-gritty details. Ready to up your option trading game? Let's get into it, y'all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Option trading is like a video game. You do need to follow a skill tree. You do need to know buying costs and selling costs as a prereq to understand call credit spreads. Otherwise, this video won't make too much sense to you, so I'll have those videos linked up here and description down below. And as you know I start, you don't have to smash the like button just yet to do it in the very end. If you find this video useful and insightful, hold me accountable. Now, without further ado, let's dive right into the details. And let's start with the one minute version. A call credit spread is essentially selling a call and buying another call at a higher strike price. Imagine you have a pad of butter and then you use a knife to spread it out towards the higher strike direction. Then you have a call credit spread. If this is a spread, it will be an 800-805 call credit spread. If you open this position, you believe Tesla stock will not go above 800, the lower strike price. If you spread from here to here, then you have a 780-785 call credit spread, which means you don't want Tesla stock to go above 780. It's called a call credit spread because once you open the position, you right away receive money. You get a cash, you get credits. For example, if I sell an 800 call and then buy an 805 call to open this call credit spread, then I will get 170 bucks cash right away. I receive $170 credits right away. That's the one minute version. Not too bad, isn't it? Now let's go to the three minute version. A call credit spread involves two call option contracts. You sell one and then you buy another another one. The one that you sell will have a lower strike price than the one that you buy. This is always true. If the call you buy has a lower strike price, that's no longer a call credit spread. It becomes a call debit spread, which is a video for another time. Robinhood will tell you what spread you open. So make sure to double check it here before you submit your order. Ooh, why do I get money right away? The reason you receive money first is that the call that you sell will give you more money than the call that you buy. In this example, the 800-805 call credit spread, I get $170 cash or credits upfront because selling an 800 Tesla call gives me $2,018 cash and buying an 805 call only costs me $18.48. So the net is a positive $170. Fundamentally, if you remember from my call videos, for any call option contract, a lower strike call is always, always, always more expensive than a high strike call. You can look at it here. A 780 call is more expensive than a 790 call, which is more expensive than an 800 call, so on and so forth. And therefore, it makes total sense that you receive more money from selling a lower strike call than the money that you spend on buying a high strike call. As a result, you net positive, you receive credits, you get cash right away. Mm, it sounds so unreal. What's the catch? When you open a call credit spread, yes, you receive credits first, but you also need to put some money away as collateral. Temporarily, the amount depends on the strike difference. For an 800-805 call credit spread, your brokerage firm will require a $500 collateral. $500 will be taken away from your account temporarily, and you cannot use that $500 before your call credit spread position is closed. If by expiration date, Tesla stock price, just like how you expect it, is below 800, both the 800 and 805 call option contract will become worthless. They become zero dollars. The price of both contracts drops all the way to zero. Then that $500 collateral will get released back to your account you debt with $170 profit that you gain from the beginning. If Tesla stock price ends at let's say 820, even above your highest strike price of 805, you won't get your $500 collateral back and actually you will lose all $500 of collateral. But since you gain 170 in the beginning, so your net loss is actually 3 30. If the Tesla stock price ends up somewhat between 800 and 805, you can net either positive or negative depends on where exactly. And that concludes the 3 minute version. Now let's go to the 5 minute version. In a call credit spread, you sell a low strike price call option contract. 
and then at the same time buy a high strike call option contract. We can use the same 800-805 call for the spread example. And let's break it down one by one. If you just sell a $800 strike price Tesla covered call, you are covered by your own 100 shares of Tesla in case the contract gets exercised. Your max profit is $2,018, not including the difference between when you buy those Tesla stocks and the 800 price. Let's exclude that for now. And of course, by selling this covered call, you want Tesla stock price to stay below 800 because that's when that option contract can become worthless and you keep your full $2,018 profit without losing your 100 shares. However, when you also buy an 805 strike price call option contract along with the 800 call that you sell, your risk profile becomes quite different. Spending $1,848 on buying an 805 Tesla call. By definition, you want Tesla stock to go up to go above 805 because that's how you profit, that's why you buy a car. You want the underlying stock to go up. Just opposing these two contracts together, you can see the collateral becomes only 500 bucks rather than 100 shares of Tesla if you were to sell the 800 Tesla covered call by itself. For selling an 800 call, you want Tesla stock to stay below 800. You don't want it to go above. On the other hand, by buying an 805 call, you actually want Tesla stock to go above 805. This means buying the 805 call essentially protects you from losing tons of money. Because even Tesla soars to $1,000. Yes, you'll be losing a lot of money from the 800 call that you sell. But at the same time, the 805 call that you bought will also make you a ton of money as well. The net effect is the 805 call will cap your losses, which is $500, exactly your collateral amount. The max loss for an 800 810 call credit spread is $1,000. That for an 800 a 15 call credit spread is $1,500. As you can see the pattern, it's always the difference between two strike prices times 100. The outcome of any call credit spread has five scenarios. We can use the same example. If Tesla stock ends below 800, you win. You keep the whole 170. The 500 bucks collateral will get released back to you. If Tesla stock ends above 805 by expiration date, you lose. You still keep the 170, but you lose the $500 collateral. So your net loss is 330. If Tesla stock ends at 801.7 you break even because you keep the 170 from beginning you also lose 170 so net zero if Tesla stock ends between 800 and 801.7 you profit a little bit say it ends at 801 you keep the original 170 but you lose 100 bucks so you net $70 profit if Tesla stock ends between 801.7 and 805 it's not the worst case you don't lose 330 but you do lose a little bit the chart that you're seeing right now is something that i designed Robinhood does not have anything close to this but they do have something interactive that you can play with that shows you different scenarios and a profit loss change but i do find the robin hood one a bit more mathematical and mind twisting compared to the one that i have here so why would you want to open an 800 805 call credit spread versus just selling an 800 strike call even though the win condition is the same that tesla will stay below 800. we're talking about spreads here so the answer is always leverage with leverage you can use a little bit amount of money to win big in the 800 805 call credit spread case you only need 500 dollars collateral to make a max profit of 170 which is a 34 percent return you make 34 percent profit in 1.5 weeks with this call credit spread that's great over time spy only returns 10 percent however by just selling an 800 call itself it requires you to have 100 shares of tesla at this market rate at the market price of 765 per share meaning you need to have at least 76.5k in your account plus your max profit is $2,018, meaning a 2.6% return. Certainly, you need more money to begin with. You can make more dollar amounts, but way, way less percentage of return. If you only have $500 in your account or a small account, there's no way you can just sell a $800 Tesla covered call because you're not covered by 100 shares. But you can certainly do a call credit spread. Hmm, that looks good. But again, what's the catch here? The catch is leverage amplifies both the reward and the risk aka the devil. If you only have $500 in your account with this 800-805 call credit spread, and if Tesla shoots up to let's say 900 bucks, you lose all your collateral of 500 bucks, but you keep your 170, your net loss is 330, which is 66% loss of your capital in one week. Not the most exciting thing, isn't it? 
But if you just sell an 800 strike Tesla Corp loan, and if Tesla stock ends at 900, whether you choose to close the call position or you're okay being forced to sell your 100 shares of Tesla at $800 per share, your net loss will be 10K at that moment, which is about 12.5% loss. Not great, but it sounds better than 66% loss, right? If the 100 shares of Tesla that you had were bought like a while ago, back in when it was like 500 bucks a share, your net, your account is actually still very, very positive. You just missed out some extra gain. You technically didn't lose anything by selling this 800 Tesla corporate call. With a call credit spread, if you lose, well, you do lose. Hmm, all right, all right, then when is good to use this strategy? Well, I see two scenarios. One, I'm very, very, very confident that the underlying stock will not go above that lower strike price of the spread. So if it's a bear market, everything is trending down, the underlying stock is going down, this is a good strategy. And two, I have a very small account and I want to win big. At the same time, I'm okay losing a high percentage of my account if things don't go according to plan. So those are the two scenarios I can think of that make sense for core credit spread. All right, all right, now seeing core credit spread in three different versions, does the breakdown make sense? Which version is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section down below. Buying costs, selling costs are still two very, very fundamental things you need to understand in option trading. Do you ever wonder if there's a better and visual way to understand those? To get a sense of how they work behind the scene? Actually, I've used my best design thinking and craftsman skills to capture those concepts in these videos. Check them out right there. Smash the like button, subscribe to support this channel. Keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Tschüss.